climate change. How do you feel about it? Margaret Klein Solomon, also known as the climate psychologist, says that our emotions about climate change are as complex as the issue itself. It can invoke fear, grief, guilt, anger. Some of us are apathetic. Personally, I'm fearful of the impacts that climate change has on our civilization. As an atmospheric scientist, climate change defines truthful facts that I'm not here to prove to you. Rather, I'm here to share my experience as an environmental scientist that brought my fear to reality. And it began here, in South Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana, two and a half hours south of New Orleans. This region of our country is home to 40% of our nation's wetlands and is the number one producer of shrimp, oyster, and crayfish. It is the second largest producer of natural gas and third largest producer of petroleum. It is also home to cultural treasures such as Kenny Hill Sculpture Garden, as well as ancestral Indian burial mounds that date back into ancient times. All of this is being threatened to disappear due to the impacts of extreme land loss and sea level rise. Now, there are several factors that contribute to extreme land loss, but two of the most acknowledged factors is the construction of the Mississippi levee and the oil and gas industry. So naturally, marshland over time compacts and subsides. But the seasonal flooding of the Mississippi River actually replenished that subsiding land. But now that this process actually ceases to exist, there's significant land subsidence in addition to the introduction of salt water through the oil and gas pipelines that have been dredged. The result is the widening of thousands of miles of canals where marshland is being converted into open water. Saltwater intrusion also has devastating impacts to the vegetation where ghost forests such as these can be seen all throughout South Terrebonne Parish. From 1932 to 2010, South Louisiana has lost 1,883 square miles of land. This is equivalent to the size of Delaware. And from 1982 to 2010, South Louisiana experienced the land loss rate that is equivalent to losing one football field per hour. Let's take a look at some satellite imagery so you can visualize this extreme land loss. And what you'll see here are enhanced satellite imagery where the land is going to be colored yellow and the water will be colored blue. And the two images um, will be from the two years 1982 and 2014. Now, the land loss does not stop here. South Louisiana has one of the highest sea level rise trends in the whole world. The rate of land loss is going to increase substantially and ultimately lead to the subsidence of South Louisiana in the next 50 years. So what has the state done in response to this? They created their master plan, which was passed in 2012. It highlights 109 projects that have a price tag of $50 billion dollars which notably includes the Morganza to the Gulf, which is a hurricane protection levee system that stretches across South Louisiana, as depicted in the pink line in the image over here. The state said that it would be cost prohibitive to actually extend the levee further south, thus excluding the communities that fall below the line, generating much discontent among these communities, especially since there is no additional strategies to protect their land, and rightfully so. I was there during the drafting and the finalization of the Coastal Master Plan, and as I sat in hearings and meetings, 
I wondered and I questioned about the intentional dismissal of the needs of the most vulnerable communities of the state. And humanly so. The disappearing coastline threatens one of the most fundamental aspects of one's identity. Place. If you close your eyes and think about your work, your school, where you spend time with your family, the communities you live in, I can guarantee you the one thing in all of your minds is land. Every human on this earth forms an emotional bond with their place, thus making land quintessential to our identity. Now, most of us take land for granted and assume that there will be something beneath our feet to support every footstep that we take. However, for the communities of South Terrebonne Parish, there have been forces of nature that have literally been removing land from beneath their feet. And there's one community in particular that has watched their land transform into water. Ildejan Charles. In its heyday, 350 to 400 farmers actually lived on the island that had flourishing community farmlands. It was lush with vegetation. But now only 27 families remain on the island because of the devastating impacts of hurricanes, as well as frequent flooding of the single road that leads to the island. Ildejan Charles is home to a tribal community of resilient people that have fought to protect their land, but within their lifetime, there will be no land to fight for. This, to me, is evident, but without clear communication and counsel from the state, I wondered if the residents in Ildejan Charles, as well as South Terrebonne Parish as a whole, are actually ready and prepared to relocate. So in 2013, I went to South Terrebonne Parish and investigated the place attachment, which is the emotional bond you have with your place, the risk perceptions, which is the perceptions you have in the changes of the environment, as well as their past adaptation practices to extreme weather, and how all three of these factors affected and impacted their future adaptation preferences. And what I came to find out is that most of the residents have a very strong bond with their ancestral lands and are very aware of their disappearing coastline. What concerned me, however, is that only 14% of the residents actually had a plan to relocate. They felt that Ildejan Charles was the only community that needed to plan for the future. And this need was recognized by several filmmakers at the time who sought to tell or portray the story of this disappearing coastline. Unfortunately, this need actually turned into action and Ildejan Charles partnered with a local nonprofit organization, the Lowlander Center, to apply for federal funding um, for aid to help with their relocation. This past January, Ildejan Charles actually received $48 million to help with their relocation as a part of the National Disaster Resilience Competition, co-funded by the Department of Urban and Housing uh, housing and Urban Development, and the Rockefeller Center. More information about the resettlement can be found at www.coastalresettlement.org. Ildejan Charles is now home to our nation's first climate migrants. Please note that I said migrants and not refugees, as environmentally displaced peoples are not yet protected under international law. Regardless of this mislabeling, Ildejan Charles Nation's first title has brought much attention to the island and has created a chaotic watering hole, in a sense, for the media, for researchers, and for practitioners. The resettlement also caught the attention of the state. This sobering reality of this relocation actually helped the state to develop a new coastal resilience plan called LA Safe. The acceptance of this shrinking state is actually reflected in this new plan as it designates resettlement zones that are at-risk areas that are expected to 
experience 14 feet of flood water in a 100-year flood in the next 50 years. Ildijan Charles is in this zone. But what about the other communities? What about the other at-risk communities that are here? What about the 13 million of us here in this country that are expected to actually experience flooding impacts due to sea level rise within the next century? Surely purchasing resettlement sites and rebuilding thousands of communities will be ineffective and unsustainable. Already in our own backyard, we have communities that have been fighting and struggling with this issue of relocation, yet the U.S. has no U.S. agency dedicated towards the issue of internal migration. Why? Because our U.S. government has refused to prioritize climate change, and we've allowed fossil fuel money to speak louder than the truth. The rest of the world doesn't have this issue. In fact, there are already international organizations in place to address this issue of migration, and we cannot allow them to be the only ones to take on this responsibility. The whole world is going to be impacted by displaced people. It is predicted that 200 million people are going to be displaced worldwide by the year 2050, but the complexity of climate change can actually deem this figure to be a gross underestimation. Tony Oliver Smith, a world-renowned expert in relocation and resettlement, once said that resettlement brings together a wide range of cultural, social, environmental, economic, institutional, and political factors that both transpire in proximate time frames and intertwine influencing each other in, complex, in compounding the complexity. Climate change migration is complex because it requires the coordination and collaboration of all these sectors as well as collaboration with the communities, the vulnerable communities themselves. It's going to take a village to save a village. Not only do we need to start seeing relocation as a viable form of adaptation rather than a last-minute exit strategy, we need to start bridging the gap between the people and the decision makers. To this day, there are people in Ildijan Charles that are refusing to move. And they're questioning why the state hasn't helped them more to actually save their land. This, to me, indicates that there is a major lack of communication and integration with the people. Even when I was there a few years ago, I saw this. And I questioned how is an already splintered community going to actually overcome the emotional and mental stresses of relocation and then socially reconstruct their identities upon resettlement. I think that the only way that this is possible is if you have a steadfast identity. You have to truly know who you are and the culture that you come from, and you also need support through the education of your culture and that's the exact reason why I was quick and very excited to work with Jonathan Foray, the executive director of the South Louisiana Wetlands Discovery Center, who actually wanted to record the culture of South Louisiana. Together, we developed Vanishing Points, a community-driven, web-based mobile application that identifies and tells the story of culturally significant locations in South Louisiana. From its humble beginnings, Vanishing Points promoted self-advocacy, empowered the voiceless, as well as discouraged the harmful association of vulnerability with helplessness. I aspire to make Vanishing Points global and to promote the integration of participatory approaches in climate change solutions. My experience in South Louisiana opened my eyes to the reality that we will all see in the next few decades. And now, I firmly believe that our survival depends on us waging war against climate change.
educate yourself, connect with others, and use your voice to inspire change.